This video will show you how to set up a data table in Google Docs. The first thing that we want to do is access our Google Drive. Once inside your Google Drive, you need to access the folder in which you want to create your document or the folder in which your document already exists. My folder is Experimental Design Examples. And now that I'm inside that folder, if I want to create a new document, I'll hit New, Google Doc. Or if I have an existing document, which I do, Example Lab Report, I'll just double click on that. And that will take open the doc and take me to my lab report. And as you can see, I have the title, Problem, Hypothesis, Materials, and Procedures already put into my lab report. The headings are in bold and spaced evenly, so they're identifiable and easy to read. Let's scroll down, you can see that now that I'm done with my procedures, I'm ready to collect data, so I will need the data table. You want to enter down to the a new line in the upper left menu, click on insert, table, and just by moving your cursor across it will highlight the blue squares and we want to highlight until we have a 5x5 five five. and one click will insert that chart or table into your document. Now we've got a little bit of work to do to make a data table so if you start here in the first column rows 1 and 2 we want to click and hold and drag to highlight. We want to right click on that and you'll be able to merge cells. That opens up that space for us, which is important. We want to do the same thing in column 5. Drag and hold to highlight, right click, merge cells. And then again in this top row, columns 2, 3, and 4, we want to drag across, right click, merge cells. And now this is starting to look a lot more like a data table. Let's go ahead and fill out the headings. The first, col or first column is our independent variable and levels of independent variable. If we go up to our title, we see that type of surface is the independent variable. And we will type that in that blank. Next is your dependent variable, all the things that you're measuring in the experiment, all of your data. And we can see from our title that's the amount of time until the car stops. Go back and put that into our data table. And the amount of time is a measurement. Those measurements need units, and in this case, it was in seconds. So I'm going to put a lowercase s for seconds. You'll see that our units need to go in parentheses and always need to be included in your dependent variable. Units should also be included in your average for your dependent variable, which is in this column. So in here, and I will also include my units. We're almost there. In these boxes, we can use to, put, to label our trials or trails. And now we want to list out our levels of independent variable or the types of surfaces that we tested. So, scrolling back up to our materials and procedures, you will see that we used the floor as one of our surfaces. We also used paper. We used cardboard. We also tested with sandpaper. However, there's no more room left if you did a 5x5. Five five. So what we want to do is right-click here and go to Insert Row Below. And that will help us or give us room to enter our next level of independent variable and you can continue if you have more. Over here we have trial 1, trial 2, and trial 3. We know that we can always do more trials than this and if that's the case you want to right click in your last column of trials, insert column right. This time we will have to remerge the top cells by highlighting, right clicking, Clicking Merge, and then we can hit Trial 4, 
and I really like to center. As you can see, these are all left justified, and I like to center my my headings so that they're nice and neat. If we drag and highlight all of these, or some of them, we can go up here and click center to center justify our text and really make our data table look nice. Now we're ready to do our trials and record our data.